Looking like a world. Like a horror church. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Wait, is that recording? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm okay. gonna clap it in. I'll I'll just intro. Hello, 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 and welcome back to another Game of Thrones recap. It is hashtag GOTTV. It is Monday and we are here. Whew. Goodness gracious. Uh, this is episode five. Yes. East Watch. We only have three episodes left. <sighs> and oh it's been gosh. so good. I it feel has. like there has not been a season of Game of Thrones where I've liked every episode. Where I was like interested in every episode. I feel like in the past I would just I can pick and choose yes. episodes of like each yes. season. But yes. this one, like I will buy the box set. Like I want the commentary. I want the behind the scenes of this epic season. Oh, this boy. season has, I feel like because it's so short, it's only eight episodes, they have not had a chance to slow down. Mm -hmm. um, everything has just been to the point, like, we will yeah. get to it. Yes, That's so shows you, so since we're going to get to it, let's just get to it. Can I just begin? Okay. Look, I have, you know I have to. Yeah. Jon Snow. Jon Snow for the win, okay? Because he just stay snatching Danny's wig at every turn. He said, I have to return. I have to go back to, to the north. Like, stuff is, I got a raven. Stuff is going down. She was like, I did not give you permission <laughs> to leave. He was like, I don't need your permission, girl. I'm the king of the north. Or did you forget? I didn't bend the knee. I'm still a king. Mm -hmm. And deuces, I'll see you later. I'll holler yeah. at you. I'll send you a raven for when, <laughs> when I need you to come. I, I, he stayed, snapped, like, before it was, I Miss, mean, I really don't know you like yeah. that. So if I do have to go by your father, I don't want no part. And I just feel yeah. like Danny is so used to people just submitting to her every whim. Like she's so used to people saying she just dropped it, I'm a queen. You see these dragons? And people are just like, you know what? I do see them dragons. You're right. And it just like been in it. To John the point is like, of that. Whatever. To the point of that, you have to look at those people. Those people who think about the people who bended the knee to her and mm -hmm. called her their queen have never witnessed the wrath of the Mad King. So their bended knee yeah. is different from someone else's, which is why I can understand um, why, it, I, I, don't, I don't think that the House Tyrell really wanted to mess with her like that, but they did because they can't stand Cersei. Yeah. I believe that she is the lesser of the two evils, but due to her father, she is evil. So, I mean, I, I don't like, think she's evil, but you know what I'm saying, like guilt by association type of deal. I mean, I feel like she's pretty much doing what needs to be done. It's like sure. it wasn't in her mind. Like she's sure. not willingly trying to hurt people or make them submit to her. But it's like, look, if you don't follow the rules, it's like it's it's black or white. It's this or that. So mm -hmm. there's no in between with her. If you don't agree mm -hmm. with I with what I say, say what's up to my son. <laughs> Yo, them th the Thrakis, they stay ready. They. Stay they ready, yo. They were so ready to just chop heads. Mm -hmm. They stay yeah. ready. Yeah. But yeah. let's backtrack a little bit because this episode just uh, went right in and it, it's like no cliffhangers. Mm -mm. We come right in, Jamie's alive. Jamie and Bron are alive. They swam to whatever shore and <laughs> they're they're both alive. They both survived. Yeah. And they're like, you know, we gotta go back to King's Landing. We have to tell Cersei what happened and we need to kind of let her know that this is not looking good for us. Like, I think she he was three dragons. Yeah, they, and then, you know, when Jamie got there, he's like, look, that was only one. She, her dragon incinerated thousands of men in like two seconds. It's like, what's gonna happen if she brings all three of them? So, the, you know, they bring in like a butter knife to a gunfight. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's not you, looking good you, for them. You didn't come up with a better analogy. <laughs> I mean, a butter knife mean. to that's, a gunfight. That's what it is. It's, it's just well, really, yeah, it's not looking good for them. Yeah, it's not. And um, Jamie's trying to like put it in her ear, but like, so she's like, "Look, I either submit and die because I'm not. I'm sure I'm not going to be able to stay in power once no. Danny comes over here, or we can fight and die." So she's like, "I'm going to fight. Like, I'm not. I'm going to go down swinging. There's, there's no way in hell that I'm going to just give her the throne." So, did we miss the part where this happened? I mean, I, nobody missed it. It's like, ye Jesus, seriously? Like, they don't have, like, I guess they didn't have, like, protection back in the time. No, it was a pull out method or nothing. <laughs> like, but still. Who? She didn't do 
not need a baby right now. Even even Jamie was like, yo, <laughs> who baby you gonna say this is? And she was like, you are the father. I'm unconcerned <laughs> yeah. with any of those things. Mm -hmm. I am producing. She was concerned about producing another heir. Yeah, that's what she was concerned about producing an heir. Even though the streets have always talked about how those other three kids were Jamie's children. Yeah. Yeah, the streets had always, always, always talked about that. But just for Cersei to just not care. Okay, blatantly. He's like, look, blatantly. I'm going to just let everybody know this stuff. It just shows you where her mind's at. She's just really, she being, she, she being real messy. She is messy boots, honey. Messy, messy boots. And I'm, oh, I'm kind of wondering if that was the only, like, dragon dagger Mm -hmm. thrower thing that they had I don't know because that's been incinerated <laughs> well I don't know because I don't know if that was just like the way Braun was trying to get Jamie down to that uh, cave thing just like mm -hmm. to speak with Tyrion but he was telling him like you know come back here we can practice a uh, wilderness thing so I don't know if that was just a lie I didn't see it like in frame another mm -hmm. weapon but I didn't that's see how he kind of got him down there to talk to Tyrion because the greater plot of this show or well, this episode is that uh, once uh, Brand sent the ravens everybody like look these white walkers are coming I've seen them their information they are about to storm the wall and they're like look we need to clearly show these people what they're up against so Tyrion went to Jamie to try to like look can you seriously only listens to you so please try to convince this lady that this threat is real and you know I kind of got to band together those white walkers are nothing to be played with they're really not yeah and it, with, with everybody has been uh towards the end of the episode it's a very pivotal moment really leading up to episode six which i feel like my heart is going to stop i feel like i need to have you know my wine on deck I wine no sis i'm gonna have some tequila yeah. oxygen i need like, tequila i'm gonna have my nebulizer like up and running it's gonna be like i feel like it's honestly pumping. It's gonna be yeah. too much but what everybody has been deemed as the rest of Rose suicide squad you know they are going to catch them away kind of them. um i am so upset that john is not there to stop this dang nabbit little finger he is the bane of my existence <laughs> He knows exactly what he is doing, mm -hmm. and now he is trying to set poor Arya up against her sister. Yeah, and I feel like people like always hate a little finger. You've always hated him. I always, but can I just be to my defense? Yeah, everything that the actor who plays Littlefinger has been in, he like plays a douche like everything. His face, everything about him. I just be like, dude, seriously. Seriously, like get some other roles here. Like that's always what he he's plays. Yeah, it's just his face looks very sneaky. Like he's up it, to something. <laughs> it looks like he's up to something. Like it very does. Slug. He is. He is. So then he, we see him plant some type of raven, some old raven note, um, in there because he knew that Arya was following him. He knows that he's being followed. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't know if this is Arya's end game or if she wants him to kind of see her or whatever. I don't know. I would hope so because I know like a lot of the chat on Twitter, it's like, look, Arya's been trained as a faceless assassin for years. How did she get played by Littlefinger? Like, I really hope that she's not. I hope that she's smart enough to know that she's getting played. I, I hope that she is too and I hope she can kind of like listen. I feel like that conversation is going to happen between her and Sansa and I hope that they can kind of see above that because Sansa knows not to trust Littlefinger. She mm -hmm. said it plenty of times. She's like, only a fool would trust him. So exactly. she knows not to really confide in him. But Arya being away from home since season one and not really knowing these dynamics of any of these people, she's basically coming home to like a brand new house. She knows none of these people. So she right. don't know who she can trust. But I would hope, even though she and her sister didn't really bang like that, I hope that she would at least trust her sister. That's so many, oh sorry. That was so many years ago. Yeah. I do hope that Arya has grown up and, and you know, doesn't fall back into those those juvenile ways. And then you see him, like, he, he plants that raven, which is like a, a letter that Sansa wrote right after her um, her dad got accused. I don't think he was dead yet. Um, you know, to convince her brother Rob to come down to um, 
bend the knee bend the knee to, to, to these people yeah. to draw free because at the time she was still engaged to draw free <laughs> okay <laughs> and even still she still you know and just to backtrack just so like, so ever so slightly <clears throat> Cersei hates Tyrion mm -hmm. because even though it was crystal crystal clear that Olena killed Joffrey mm -hmm. and even though like Jamie had to admit if you were Olena would you want your granddaughter to be with Joffrey or Cersei <laughs> for the life of her she still wanted to blame Tyrion yeah she is a hateful hateful woman yeah. and I hate to say this they should stab her in her stomach the way they did Rob Stark's wife <sighs> I know, right? Oh, that's so savage. Right? But it's thirsty, so don't nobody care. Just like ain't nobody care that she got raped. Ain't nobody care when they made her uh, walk, of walk of shame and throw and roots and everything. All types of mess at her, but anyway. But back to this. Um, the episode that yeah. was Gilly and Sam at the Citadel. You know, Sam was kind of over being there. He's tired of making all these news. He's like, I need to be helping with this. Army of the Dead coming. I shouldn't be yes. sitting here. And nobody's listening to me. And it was just like, you know, breezing through the books. Like, you know what? What's going on with me? Like, what is what happened? What was the secret ceremony? Basically, alluding that John is an, a, a legitimate child and he is a true Targaryen and the true heir to the throne. But Sam is just like over his head. He hears none of it. Everybody's like screaming at the TV. I'm like, girl, keep reading, keep reading. Yeah, I know. And you know, Sam storms out, but it's like this really confirmed what everybody's been thinking, yeah. saying forever that John is a Targaryen. He is yeah. uh, the true heir to the Iron Throne. Yeah. And that is a uh, Danny. They are related. Yes, but they I don't are. care because they're so cute together. And no, I want them to have beautiful little dragon babies. No, no. no. Speaking of dragons and John. We see John have a moment with one of the dragons where he touches it and that I am telling you, I am telling you in my soul, that would have never happened unless John was a true Targaryen. And I think that Dan, because remember Danny was coming back and she <clears> saw them. And she was like, oh my God, he's about to eat them. And then, no, 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 she gets another okay. angle and she sees that John is actually rubbing him her son. She's yes like, she's, she's like, like mm. wait a minute no she's like mm. no she wasn't <laughs> she was like wait a minute because i think she also knows that those dragons would not have reacted to someone who was not <laughs> yeah a true targaryen just saying i don't think anybody cares because as he was leaving to go to the wall with the crew mm -hmm. she's like oh it was basically i mean the subtext that i was getting she was just like oh i'll miss you no <laughs> No, that wasn't it. He was like, mm, I'll miss you too. No, that's not what it was. That was a I, I hate to crush all of you guys' hopes and dreams. That is her nephew, okay? Who cares? That is her Who cares? nephew, and that is not going to happen. They will not have dragon babies. Um, there are, however, many, many um, things on the net. There's, like, predictions that Jon Snow will never sit on the Iron Throne. Why? I didn't believe any of it. Um, they're saying that he doesn't want it. He might just, you know, fall back and just stay in the north because that's what he knows. Very true. Mm -hmm. Um, could be, you know, a lot of people won't accept it because he is technically he's been known all his life as a bastard child. Um, you, you know, it, okay. Honestly, there's a ton of theories. There's a ton of theories out there. But only the writers really know. Only the writers can speak to that. But we will see whoever will sit on the Iron Throne. They will do so next season. So yeah, because was, that is it. It was a good episode. Yeah. Uh, Jorah Mormont returned. Gendry returned. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were like, well, we'll be seeing Mormont. But uh, Gendry, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Sir Davos made a, you know, a very pun about, you know, oh, I thought you were still rowing. So everybody got a big chuckle out of that. It's mm -hmm. like he's alive and well. And, King's Landing and you know ready to go to war yeah so that's what's going to happen next episode they are going to war with them white walkers and I just the end of the episode is like I'm in your face winter okay. it is here I mean and it's so in your face like you can't miss it it's oh my god I can't wait I I actually I can because it gives me anxiety thinking about it I'm sure I'm going to be so anxious that whole hour but I'm ready I'm gonna have to have like 
a big old glass, like my glass gonna be like this big, a tequila. Yeah. Straight. Like, <laughs> like no chaser. Yes, but whew. So yeah guys, let us know your favorite moments of this episode. If there's any theories that you guys wanna throw our way, be sure to do it in the comments. Or on Twitter at A and B Convo TV. Also on Instagram, there's our handle as well. And be sure to subscribe, comment, like, and we will see you guys next week for another recap if we survive it. You know? I know. If we survive, if we survive.